Hello and welcome back guys, today we're going to have a different kind of video where I will show you how to use AI to enhance your productivity as a UX UI designer. Okay guys, so before we begin, as a disclaimer, you have to keep in mind that ChatGPT is just a tool and you're the one that should make the choices. Uh, the best uses you can give it is as a brainstorming tool, as a guidance tool, but remember you have to use your criteria and your knowledge to make the choices, right? Also, ChatGPT is a very powerful tool you can use uh, to complement your research or to make a research based on ChatGPT's information, but you have to keep in mind that this would never replace a full-fledged UX research, and I think the best case scenario in which you can leverage ChatGPT's knowledge is in our small project where there's no budget for UX research, but you still want to create a professional website based on information and not just on references you found. Okay, so as a very useful tip, whenever you're gonna use ChatGPT, provide some context on what you're doing and also give ChatGPT a role, so as an example. I'm gonna provide a little more context on the brand. Okay, so let's jump to use case number one, better identify and define our target audience. The prompt I'm gonna give ChatGPT for this part is help me identify and define the best target audience for this brand, list demographics, psychographics, challenges and opportunities of these users. Let's go. Okay guys, and you can see it already gave me some very interesting information. Um, it's telling me the best demographic for this is users aged 25 to 45, uh, probably the most uh, active uh, range in which people are still dating. The location is Miami and nearby affluent neighborhoods. Uh, the income is medium to high. Uh, the gender is not restricted. Psychographics, there are romantic enthusiasts, luxury gift shoppers and experienced seekers. This is very interesting. I also asked it to provide some challenges, which are basically the competition. Uh, the challenges, the challenge lies in the dif differentiating from other gift-centric businesses. Uh, the seasonal variation. This is pretty interesting. I don't know if I would have thought of this. Um, yeah, correct. Like high demanding during certain seasons, like Valentine's Day, require managing inventory and operations effectively, delivery and freshness. Because yeah, I mean, um, things like flowers are very perishable. So yeah, like the like the delivery is a key part of this business. I also asked for opportunities with I thought was a very interesting prompt to give ChatGPT and it's telling me storytelling like leveraging romantic narratives that's definitely a thing we, uh, we were considering on doing. Personalization like offering custom options for gifts uh, would be an excelling point that's great. Uh, collaborating with local florists or chocolatiers to offer unique locally crafted products that's great. Introducing subscription models for regular flower deliveries or chocolate assortments could foster. This is great. Okay, so let's go to use case number two. Now that we have our target audience kind of defined, we are going to create user personas so that uh, both us and the rest of the team as a more consolidated way to think about this user and we're on the same page that this is the user we are catering to. So let's give ChatGPT this prompt. Create two user persona profiles based on that target audience. Okay guys and Let's check this out. It gave gave us user persona number one, Romantic Rachel. I love that it gave uh, this user a name that you will immediately recognize when you listen to it. So Romantic Le Rachel, age 30, location Miami, occupation marketing manager, uh, income 80k, background. It gave us some behavior and goals, challenges and pain points. Uh, let's check the challenges. Often struggles to find unique, high quality gifts that align with her romantic sensitivities. Oh, sensibilities, uh, limited time for in-store shopping, concern about time delivery and freshness of perishable items like flowers, this is great. It actually gave us how the brand can appeal to her. So offering customizable gift sets with personalized messages, ensuring seamless online shopping experience, this is great. Persona number two is Luxurious Lucas, age 35, location Coral Gables, Miami. Uh, background because it's a taste for luxury and appreciate the finer things in life. Wow. 
behavioral goals, six premium artisanal products that, refle that reflect sophistication and luxury. Behavior and goals, six premium artisanal products that reflect sophistication and luxury, challenges and pain point, finding exclusive and sophisticated gifts that align with his partner's tastes and how the brand can appeal, showcasing limited edition or exclusive collections, creating a seamless and convenient online shopping experience, and collaborating with local artisans to offer unique handcrafted products that stand out. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is go to DALI, Mid Journey, uh, Photoshop's generative features, uh, any text to image AI that you know of or prefer. This one is called Gencraft. My prompt was to create a realistic portrait of a 30 year old woman from Miami who is a marketing manager and has a romantic personality. And this is the result. I love it. I think it's pretty awesome. For our next prompt, we're asking Gencraft to create a realistic portrait of a 35 year old luxurious man that lives in who lives in Miami and works as a financial consultant. Okay, we have our two user persona profiles. Okay, let's go to use case number four. Uh, you can also use AI not only to create images, but to edit them. And there are two specific uh, ways in which I've used it, and I'm talking specifically about Photoshop's new AI generative feel, um, is to both edit details in the image, replace them for other things, and also kind of changing the aspect ratio of the image. So let's say you have a very square image, but you want to use it in a banner, which requires a, a more long or horizontal aspect ratio. You can use that image as a base, but then expand it and make Photoshop generate the rest of the image. So you can change it to a from a square to a horizontal layout. I'm gonna show you a very cool short video from Adobe themselves that really captures what I'm trying to say. And this is available on the latest versions of Photoshop, so make sure to make a good use of it. Okay guys, so let's jump to use case number 5, creating an information architecture. So we have a homepage which contains a hero image, featured products, then chocolates, then their subcategories, appeal leveraging. So it's actually leveraging the customizable ideas it gave it gave us. This is great because it's leveraging also the special occasions which uh, this product, this type of product, uh, really could benefit of. Uh, the gift sets, about us, a blog, and a contact. This is awesome. So let's jump to use case number six, creating wireframes. And I'm gonna tell it it's a UX designer for the creation of the wireframes, so let's go. Okay guys, and you're gonna see, obviously this is a text-based AI, so it's only gonna give us like text, text-based answers, but these are very accurate. And you're gonna see the difference between the first answer for the information architecture was mainly uh, about the content of the sections. So you can see in this part, the difference is talking more, much, much more about components. So things like tabs, grids, hero image, sliders. So it's naming actual UX UI components. Uh, that you can transform by yourself into actual wireframes. So let's jump straight into use case number seven, creating content. Okay, so I'm really curious about the fourth section it proposed in the wireframes, which is the occasions page. Um, I'm gonna have it write the content for those so to see what ideas it comes up with. And you can ask it in the format you, you like. So for example, I'm picturing having some cards for each of the occasions, so I'm gonna tell it that. Obviously the illustration is gonna be just a text-based idea, but I can use that to then prompt a image generating AI. Card number one, Valentine's Day, headline, celebrate love in every moment, subheadline, chocolates and flowers that and flowers that capture the essence of romance, CTA, explore gifts of love, illustration idea, a heart-shaped box of chocolates nestled amidst 
red roses perhaps with a soft dreamy background that ex that exudes love and affection okay so after you've created all your content leveraging ChatGPT or by yourself we can jump straight into use case number eight creating color schemes gave me not only an explanation of each color but it also gave me supporting ideas for each color palette so i'm gonna open coolers it's great for exploring color palettes creating your own so let's start by pasting the hex codes that ChatGPT gave me I think it's a bit like it's a bit obvious, you know, like it's it's what you might might expect from a from a brand like this and I I, I would love to have something more original, which might be why ChatGPT gave me this tone, but I really don't like this one. So let me show you how I sometimes use coolers. So let's say I like this three first tone, so I'm gonna lock I'm gonna click on the lock icon, these first three, lock them and if you press the space key, it's gonna start rotating. The, the remaining colors keep in mind this is not random it does take into consideration the colors you have locked in and it creates a harmonious color palette so let's check the other colors okay so the first color palette the red and pink one was called classic romance which makes sense um, this second one is called Modern Elegance. I absolutely love this one. I mean, this is something I would 100% use. I think this is super beautiful. So, the, this is the four the four hues or the four the four colors it suggested. But if you wanna expand on those, you can lock those in. I will actually do because I really love all of them. And you can click click on the plus button if you go if you move your cursor to the sides. It's gonna this uh, plus icon is gonna appear and you can click it and create as many more uh, colors as you want I'm gonna create one extra color and with the four first colors locked in I'm gonna tap on the spacebar and it's gonna start rotating on cohesive and harmonious colors that go with my first four ones I actually like this one so yeah let's say this is the color palette I'm gonna use but I'm gonna leave it in there and we're gonna jump to our next use case plan user testing so let's say we already created our e-commerce it's live and we want to test it with real users so i'm gonna ask chat gpt to create a user testing script based on the website we've created so you can see it created a full user test script along with the with how much time each step should take so it's first proposing like some welcome and introduction exercises explaining the purpose of the of the activity and in the first part it, it gives us like task based testing so task number one exploring the home page task number two finding a specific product task three exploring occasions and gift set which if you remember it, we, we kind of prompted to be an important part of the experience some feedback and wrap up okay and after you actually conduct this user testing we can jump straight into use case number 10 and our final one enhancing our designs based on the user feedback so let's say you already conducted this user testing which by the way you can do in usertesting.com this is a great platform to test your designs and actually gather feedback from real users you can be as specific as you want and they're gonna find the right user to test your products once you have this user feedback, you can use this to enhance and to iterate on design alternatives that can create a better experience for them. So let's give it a prompt. So it's suggesting a revamped occasion section with clearer categorization and a drop down menu. Implement a drop down menu under the occasions tab for quicker access to specific occasions. This is amazing. Visual Visual clarity and navigation, visual thumbnails, use visually distinct representative thumbnails for each occasion card, featured occasion, featured occasions, highlight key occasions, detailed occasions pages, dedicated pages, and visual storytelling. This is amazing. Create individual pages for major occasions. Create individual Detailed location pages, so dedicated pages, creating individual pages for major occasions like Valentine's Day, like Valentine's Day, anniversaries, birthdays, with curated gift sets and detailed. 
filtering and sorting options, filtering tools, user user friendly UX, user testing iterations, continuously conduct user tests to ensure se to ensure effectiveness of the rebound vocation sex, simplify journey. Educational elements, educational content, provide informative content about the significance of each occasion and suggestions for suitable gifts. Okay, and that was our final use case for AI. Obviously, guys, there's a million ways in which you can leverage these tools. And I would love if you could share how you're currently using these tools in your design process in the comment section. So as my closing thoughts, I really think as designers, we shouldn't be fearing AI is going to replace us. I think designing is a very human skill, which is not easily replaced by AI. That being said, I think AI is one of the most powerful things created by humanity lately, uh, and we should definitely use it and learn how to use it, but always as an assistant, as an iteration tool, as a brainstorming tool, and not as a decision maker. The decision maker should always be you with your professionalism, with your education, with your knowledge and your experience and your human criteria because these tools will never have the sensibility and the human intuition you have. And that's it guys, if you enjoyed the content please leave a like, if you wanna keep up with the channel subscribe and I'm actually interested in knowing how you guys are using these tools currently so leave a comment if you're using this in your daily life, if you're using AI as a UX UI designer please let us know how you're using it and what tools are you using and that's it guys, see you in the next next one.